that is that about that now without wasting much of our time we are going to head straight to the lecture for today we started studying the poem the leader and the lead last, last week written by Niyo Sundari and we are going to make progress to also talk about the various literary elements found in the poem the various literary elements found in the poem Ni Yosundare's poem, The Leader and the Lead. There are so many literary elements. We're going to be looking at, I think, one or two of them, okay? The poetic devices and elements in the poem. Okay, let's make progress. Now, simile. What is simile? You, oh, I hope you know, you can still remember what simile is. Simile is a comparison between two things, or two or more things, using as or like. It has to do with comparison, comparison, comparison. Now, you can see in the poem, I think, pre, uh, let's look at line, um, the second to the last stanza, where the poet said, Tough like a tiger, compassionate like a doe, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. You can see the comparison between two things. You understand the compare? Our leaders, that our leaders should be tough like a tiger. And they should be as compassionate see, because you know the doe has an attribute of being compassionate you're very meek very humble so we can say our leader should be compassionate they should be tough like a tiger and compassionate like a doe we can also see transparent like a river yes you know rivers are transparent sometimes you can look into a river especially when it is still when it is still quiet no we don't have waves you know when we have the waves it can be pretty difficult to see what is inside but when it is still you could actually see what is inside very transparent you, you can have a, a cup of water you can dip maybe um a bead a bead inside you get to see it clearly so you can see they told they expect our leaders to be as transparent like a river and mysterious like a lake one thing about lake okay we have one oxbow lake and up till now you know we still visit that place because you know we are trying to see figure oxbow lake out you get okay i don't know if that one is mysterious but you get okay so that is found you can see the use of like so please kindly are we together students of course hope you know that as i always tell you you should have your pen I don't have a pen here but you should have your pen and also a writing material and so kindly on the line like write simile kindly identify them you know the thing i'm going to see all this note as soon as we resume i want to see everything you've written down so on the line um like you can see how many like one two three four on the line it, these are examples of simile as found in the poem examples of simile as found in the poem are we cool with that I hope we are i hope we are making progress okay paradox paradox who can remember what is paradox paradox is you know a statement that can be really ambiguous you get you know a statement that is paradoxical a statement that sound absurd you know on the surface it sounds really absurd but when you really analyze that statement when you look at it critically you will know that it has an underlying meaning you get it an absurd statement which has underlying meaning are you getting it you know we have the denotative and the connotative sometimes denotatively those statements sound crazy but when you look at the connotative meaning those statements are you know really valid those statements hold water those statements are you know paradoxical you know i remember i taught you i taught you examples like um if you want peace you must prepare for war um for slaves life was death and death was life literally this statement do, do not make sense how can life be death and how can death be life these statements do not make sense at all so we, we can also find it in new osundare uses um paradox you know he makes this paradoxical statement to drive home his points to lay emphasis on the bulk of leaders we have and what we actually need right now are we together class okay now let's look at this example a leader who knows how to follow followers mindful of their right to lead now the above expression is paradoxical because a leader who has the desire to lead the people must put his or herself in the shoes of the followers in the real sense a leader can neither be a follower nor can a follower lead now it's paradoxical a leader who knows how to follow now if you want to lead people you should be ready to listen 
you should learn to put yourself in their shoes so that you can fully understand their plight you can fully understand what these people are going through are we together if you're a leader and you're always on your throne in quotes now and you don't get to listen to your followers then it doesn't make sense as a leader you know it is so it is social because leaders are actually the ones serving but we find a different case in our country today. Leaders should be the one rendering the services. But here, people become leaders so that people can serve them. You know, it's ironic. It's ironical. Are you getting that? They should be the one offering these services. They should be the one listening to people. What do you want? What do you want me to implement? What are those policies that will favor the communities, the towns, and the cities? But no, they do not ask us those questions at all. Our leaders do not do that. Are we together, guys? So now, they said a leader who knows how to follow. That is what we need. They, they sh our leaders, no, as well, it doesn't make sense. A leader knows how to follow. How does that sound to you? But it, it is valid. A leader, who knows, a leader who knows how to follow and followers mindful of their rights to lead. You know? You know, in a very real sense, followers are the ones leading because they get to tell the leader, you know, talk to the leader and the leader adopts their policies. So they are in it together. It's like a big boat and, you know, they are all in one ship. Are you getting it? So you can see it sounds paradoxical. You understand? He must put his or herself in the shoes of the followers if you want to lead people. You know, but in the real sense, like looking on surface, a leader can neither be a follower and a follower cannot cannot lead but you know all these things is just about appellations they are just titles this whole title of president it's they are just titles appellations but in the real sense they are servants they are here to serve they are here to render services to the people are we together class okay let's make progress now metaphor yes i've been waiting for this one i've been really looking forward to um look at this one metaphor now metaphor is also a comparison between two unlike things you know that right now the poem is metaphorical as the metaphor revolves around the poem of course starting from the beginning the leader and the lead you know the um you know, sundar is such a smart he's such a prolific poet he uses animals to represent humans of course we are going to go there we're going to go to allegory right away but he uses animals to represent humans and you can see the comparison between the animals the animal kingdom and human kingdom now here of course, you ho hope you know that he uses Nigeria as a case study. Because there is no... There, in fact, I don't need to know that the poet is a Nigerian to know that he's talking about Nigeria. If I read this poem, I know he's talking about our country. You can see the animals such as lion, hyena, giraffe, the zebra, the elephant, and metaphors for shady politicians who contest for leadership posts but unworthy in character. For they cannot adequately represent the people. Do I have a witness in the house? Anybody say amen? <laughs> so you get that is that is basically the Nigerian story. Can you all agree with me, students? That is basically the Nigerian story. That is what you are going through. You know, even you as teenagers now. Sometimes we're in the class and I hear some of you complain of certain policies, of certain things happening. You know, and I'm really impressed. I'm like, yes, I want these, these teenagers, they already know, they know what is happening. They know the, the crop of leaders we have and how they've been making things pretty difficult for the people. They've been making life really hard. They are, they are unworthy. You know, these leaders, what they do is when election is coming, they go and maybe, I don't know, they cheat or they bribe or, you know, they just, you know, the people are vulnerable. You can't blame the masses. They are vulnerable. They are ready for anything. Handouts. Just give it to them. They are ready to receive, you know, and they are ready to take the crumbs. And so they give it to them and they promise them so many things in their manifestos. I will do this. I have the right to lead. I can do that. I can do this. And the people are like, yes, he can do it. Why not? Let's let us let us elect him. He's the best. If we elect him, we'll do this. And you elect these leaders, and you know, they're questionable characters. You can see they are very shady. They are cunning, they're not straightforward, they are visionless. You know they, they are oppressors they oppress the people we have leaders now you say something and you know before the elections they were really humble in quotes now you know they were humble because they knew what they wanted see like i always there's this saying i saw somewhere they were like the only the only time you can test someone's humility is when he has everything when he has money ego or what is money in <laughs> 
kudi in house are though okay the only time when you can test someone's um humility is when he has money trust me poor people are always humble now poor people in quotes like you know so you can see this leader they want a position and they're really humble like, like ah that man that man make a good leader the man is down to earth he said this he said that he said that he said this we hear that right but the moment you give them that man tool you know it's like there's this they they turn around and they become oppressors you can't even have access to them you get so it is a metaphor the entire poem is a metaphor it's metaphorical comparing the animal kid using them to talk about the crop of leaders we have they represent they represent side by side they represent the crop of leaders we have of course another set of animals in the forest such as the antelope the impalas the the impalas are metaphorically referred to as the masses metaphor they refer to them as the masses they are compared to the masses you see the antelopes like they said but the the, the lion takes his claim to the leadership of the park but the antelope remembers the ferocious pounds of his paws the antelope remembers the ferocious pounds of his paws are you getting that so it is so it is so um scary you can see the antelope represent the masses we know these people was it not this same man who was a local government chairman he did nothing for the community even the primary health care center is the decapitated it is come on it is a state of hula baloo are you getting that but you you want to come out again we know these people we know they are shady we know they they are they have questionable characters but we we just we know them you understand even the impalas the impalas we are scared of them we don't want people like this who will come and not do the right thing who will come and oppress us are you getting that now we are the masses who suffer from the seriously from the misrule of the ruling class and yet cannot all unite to fight against the oppressive politicians now let's talk about topical issues you've been hearing about the killings right in southern kaduna and sokoto you can see indigenous these are people living in the so-called rural areas that are supposed to be safe people always say the rural areas is predominantly safe but if we in sokoto we see people in um southern kaduna katina you can see the bandits are everywhere the herdsmen killing people killing the masses you understand and this as a result of poor leadership if not this thing this is not the first time this is happening especially the southern kaduna this is not the first time and this issue should be addressed these issues should be addressed we are the masses who are suffering from it now um look at the covid 19 you can see what happened in other countries the their president like do not um america they gave their citizens one thousand two hundred dollars i think they even gave them another set you know nigerians who are in the who are citizens they received it some nigerians who are citizens in the u in the u.s but who were in nigeria received it received that palliative received those stipends you know just to keep body and soul together but here you know the government kept us about um palliatives you understand you know we hear on the news how the minister of the humanitarian minister um honorable sadia umar farouk told us about how they've been giving out palliative in fact there was something she said 50 billion has been distributed to 1000 households and nigerians were like oh my god you could see those funny memes nigerians were like are we that gullible are we putting on dapa like you know you can hardly conduct um testing on um suspected covid 19 um patients but you can actually distribute billions of naira in days wow what a miracle working government right you know that is the whole thing we are suffering from the misrule of the ruling class but at the end of the day look at what they said and the pack thrashes around like a snake without a head and the pack thrashes around like a snake without a head and because you can see yet we cannot all unite to fight against the oppressive politicians in a way this poem is a call to duty i hope you're taking down notes in a way this poem is a call to duty telling us that we still have a lot to do the battle is still ahead we need to unite so that they can know that we know our rights we know what we deserve as citizens you cannot keep us locked in and not give us palliative at least to the vulnerable you know how many people are going hungry you know these are the issues i'm talking about contemporary issues not even now power supply you stay at home the government anchor of course there was one time ministry of education 
connected we can access this website access that website for children to be learning at home number one power supply how can you access those websites if, no, if there is no power supply number one you know it's so it's so crazy number two guys do, did you provide um i heard in south, south africa someone i saw it on twitter in south africa um students were even enabled with empowered with laptops yes i saw a post of the government empowered them it is not even the federal government now empower them with devices to aid their learning but the reverse is the case here this is you are telling students who do not have these devices or uh, or even your the teachers you employed under the government you are telling them to start how where when you know it's so crazy how do you want these things to happen the masses keep doing everything for themselves but they have leaders up there who should do it for them and that is crazy guys so you can see it's a metaphor for nigeria oh my god it is symbolism the poet uses park in line 2 10 and 15 to depict africa and nigeria let's look at line 2 okay to the leader of the park line 10 and three. the park points to the duplicity of his stripes and line 15 and the park thrashes around like a snake without a head to depict africa now look at symbolism symbolic you know when you talk about something that is symbolic pack talks about nigeria the pack is the, now i can tell you to write an essay you know commenting on the use of pack to represent nigeria you should know what to write already a lot of things going on in the country you can see to the leader of the pack they want to lead us the pack thrashes around without a head i can say that for us because the way things are happening we don't do we really have a leader to the point that uh, we see people going online begging our leaders to speak out talk about the pandemic talk about ways you see presidents of other countries giving press briefings you know on a regular every uh, every few hours and you'll be wondering do we have a leader at all guys so the purchases park in line 2 10 and 15 to depict africa and nigeria this is our situation the entire poem is symbolic this is just the night just as you read this poem just imagine your country everything here is symbolic but you know poetry when you say the poem the pen is mightier than the sword this is what we are talking about if he had written this thing in the real sense if he had said um the leaders or maybe he mentioned the name a name now name of a leader says he wants to rule nigeria he wants to be the leader of he wants to be the president of nigeria but the people of this community remembers how remembers the extent he he goes with his bigotry and ethnicity to oppress you know stuff like that imagine hope you know that i've locked him up you know they locked people like wally shoinka um you know and what not people like mandela they, they didn't have guns these people did not have guns the pen is my child and the sword say it again beautiful now the animals such as the lion antelope hyena impala giraffe zebra elephant warthog and rhino are used to represent various types of leaders and followers me in nigeria here so that me i know who is lion i don't know if i won't mention him for saying his kids said i know who the lion is i know who the antelope is <laughs> i know who the hyena is i know the impalas people are am i an impalas i don't know maybe maybe not i know the giraffe those ones visionless leaders now i'm not just talking about the federal but the um the the local states and federal visionless leaders we know them don't worry sorry for another day i'll agree i'll agree i would say i'll agree as a son please pay attention say i'll agree now the poem is an example of an allegory this is a work of literature in which the writer in this case the poets it could be a novel like um in which the writer in uses characters to represent ideas or qualities like george always and my farm it's an example of an al allegory they use uses characters to represent ideas or qualities now the characters used in this poem is what kind of characters animal characters in this poem the poet uses animal characters to represent the leader and the followers in nigeria all these things boil down to metaphorical symbolic and allegorical i could tell you to critically analyze the poet's use of allegory you know what i expect and i could expect over two thousand words they use animal characters to talk about our leader simple 
He uses animal characters to represent the leader and the followers in Nigeria. The lion symbolizes the ruling class, while the other animals, from the antelope to the snakes, represent the religiously and eth ethnically diverse masses. Is Nigeria full of ethnically diverse masses? Yes. It is the truth. Everybody wants... Okay, yes, but you know that is true. I won't call it bigotry now, but everybody feels, you know, their need to be probably attended to if they get their brother now to be on the seats. You understand? So that is just it. Ethnically diverse masses. So the poem is allegorical. And Agri is a work of literature. Now, take note of the definition in which the writer uses characters to represent ideas. You can see how characters represented ideas and qualities. You can see how he said, transparent like a river. You know, allegorical, using characters to represent ideas and qualities. Beautiful. Let's make progress. As soon as an alliteration, you know, in every poem, there are sound effects. There are sound elements. Now, for assonance, assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds in a sentence. In line one, the lion stake his claim. Stake his claim. Stake his claim. Now, can you see stake? A, A. Underline it. A, A. Quickly, guys. Underline it. You can see in line nine, um, where they said... Yes, the giraffe craves a place in the front the giraffe craves a place in the front craves place there are so many like that i wouldn't have enough time to list them can you see that so on the line a a now alliteration cut repetition of consonant sounds in a line you no know, of poetry examples of pounds of his paws what is the consonant sound there p, p, on the line it the pack point line 13 on the line it the rhino to riotous on the line it a hybrid of habit a hybrid of habit <sighs> i want to get a guys on the line it a little bit of a lamb no a little bit of a lion l little l l a little bit of a lamb on the line l l on the line it i want to get a guys so there are so many i just re mentioned so so that we can save time please there are so many in fact that will be one of the questions i'll give you analyze all the sound effects in this poem Contrast, yes, it's, it's another device. Contrast generally involves a juxtaposition of two unlike things in order to showcase their differences. You know, juxtaposition, placing them side by side. Side by side. You know, contrasting. I could place this and this and say, ah, this is heavier, this is lighter. But this one, as much as it's lighter, it has more quality than this. Are we together, guys? Now, the poem makes use of contrast both thematically and structurally. The main idea in the poem is developed starting from the title and the body of the poem. The leader represents politicians or the ruling class in our society, while the lead refers to the masses or better still the citizens. You can see the, a contrast between the leaders and the lead. You can see the lead as made to be mild and you know, scared while the leaders are you know, oppressive, you know, the leaders are unconfident. Are you getting it? So there's a juxtaposition between the leaders and the lead. Are we together now? Enjambment, enjambment. Quickly, there is a run online as each line. What is enjambment? Run online. I taught you what is enjambment class. Again, yes. When um, one line of a poetry leads to the other, there is a run online as of the poem runs into another from beginning to the end. This helps to evaluate the subject matter. If you notice in this poem, until we got to probably um. We got very close to the last stanza. I think the last four stanza. Until we got there, there was a run online. There was no single comma, no use of no comma, no full stop. For the the lion stakes his claim to the stakes his claim to the leadership of the pack, but the antelope remembers run online. One line runs into another. One line one. There was no pause, no hyphen, no comma, no full stop. Enjambment run online. Look at it. Let's look at it yourself now. You can pause this video and analyze it yourself. Until I think we got to stanza nine before we saw a little bit of because they needed to quote before we saw a little bit at least hybrid of habits comma that's what we saw it now went to Sizura when there was a pause are you getting that so it's enjoyment run online so guys yeah we have come to the end of this